people's minds, I guess, <laughs> about what you could do at a wedding. Um, and obviously, this will have a lot of personal belief in it. Take that with a grain of salt. You know, apply it to your own lives however you can. But hopefully, you'll be inspired to you know think outside a box a little bit. So, okay. So the theme of our wedding was steampunk, um, and. Why? It's because the two of us dressed up for st as steampunk the last two Comic Cons, and we thought it would be fun to make all our relatives do it as well. Um, and of course, we just didn't want to do the white wedding dress and that kind of stuff, so just, just to make it crazy. Uh, the other theme of the wedding is the flying spaghetti monster, um, who I have here, which I will explain this particular item in a little bit. But, um, and uh, the reason behind that is both of us are atheists slash anti-theists slash flying spaghetti monster proponents. Um, I do research in molecular evolution, so I'm very interested in evolution and everything, and hence the flying spaghetti monster has been um, very crucial to us. Um, and then also we kind of wanted, it, it's, it's both non-traditional wedding, but as well as a little bit of an anti-traditional wedding. So we kind of purposely did things to be anti-traditional and Obviously, so we, we kind of played up the God theme a little bit, but using the flying skinny monster instead. Um, the location in this was in Portland, uh, south of Portland, an hour and a half south. There's a there's a little state park called Silver Falls. It has a lot of waterfalls. Oregon. It's the name. Yes. Maine. Yes. Right. Oh, there's Portland, Maine. Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was. We kind of randomly picked this place because we'd been before, and when we were thinking of wedding locations, we are like, remember that place that was out in the middle of nowhere that had no reception? Let's put all our family there and um, kind of force them into getting to know each other and you know, where there's nothing else to do except hike and talk to each other. So um, that, that was kind of the inspiration. They also had a nice kind of conference center that, and little log cabins, so uh, that's why we decided there. Um, and apparently it worked pretty well. So getting into some of the philosophy behind some of the things, um, what, I, what we did and what you know, we, we kind of liked about the wedding. Uh, first of all, it's a party. It's not really a wedding. We actually did not do anything legal there. It was, uh, it was just a party for friends and family. Um, so that made it a lot less stressful. There was definitely no bridezilla, maybe. <laughs> um, you know, like, yeah, just like, you know, who cares about the color theme? Who cares about the silverware, the flowers, or whatever? If somebody wanted to pitch in, which you know, Jeff's mom did do all the flowers and everything, you know, she could pitch in. But we don't really, we didn't really care, and so so that worked out really well because we just enjoyed each other, had fun. We didn't have to do all the details about the decorations and everything. Um, this. <laughs> the second thing um, you kind of have to come to realize is weddings are so much for your parents, like even so much more for your parents than the people involved. Uh, you know, the people involved, obviously, depending on your own personal, like, you know, if you grew up thinking, I want this wedding, whatever way, especially for females, um, yeah, you can get kind of crazy about it. But parents tend to be a little more crazier about it because it's all about, you know, their child, their reliving you know, their own mar marriages or whatnot. Um, so I, like my, my parents, like six months out, started making like videos of us and everything. And initially I'm like, ah, that's gonna suck. That's gonna be embarrassing. I really don't want to see all these like pictures of me. Um, but I was like, no, they really, they, it, they really wanted to see that. And it was such a huge thing for them to sh share with people. Um, so like one of the nights I did let them basically take over and we watched like a 20 minute video of me growing up including a picture of me naked when I was like six months old <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> uh, but you know it's yeah it's so much about them they ended up my parents are Asian obviously <laughs> and hence they uh, really like karaoke so we actually had a karaoke thing which then a lot of my friends actually got really into so it was kind of bizarre but it, it worked out really well um, another thing, of course, is about bringing friends together. Um, and the thing that we realized is, you know, we, we had a bunch of high school friends, we had a bunch of friends from San Diego, um, a lot of high school friends we hadn't seen in a while, but because we are who we are, a lot of our high school friends are the same types of people as the people that we've now 
become friends with in San Diego. So they, the two groups themselves actually meshed really well because they also you know, shared similar things or were all very, very interesting people. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And actually right after the wedding, everyone Facebooked everyone. So you know, they made a lot of connections um, at the wedding as well. Um, another thing is just keep it easy. Um, as I was saying before, like keep it a party, you know, don't stress on the small things. Um, uh, well, yeah, so we, we didn't really plan much, I guess. Like we booked the, booked the place a year out and then literally like the week or two before was like, okay, I guess we have to like look over the menu <laughs> and like decide what we're talking about. Um, and so it was very, and actually, uh, June Spoon saying that it was very crowdsourced too. Like people ended up, you know, pitching in and things just happened, kind of like a bar camp, just meshed together. It was an unwedding. It was, un yeah, actually, we used that term <laughs> throughout. I was like, it's an unwedding. Um, keep it cheap. This whole thing, we ended up, it was like $7,000, and that's 48 people's room and board for two days and meals for two days. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, the meals weren't extravagant. It was, it was a state park, so it was in the middle of nowhere. Um, but the, the food actually was pretty good, and you know, they, they did a pretty good job. But it, it was kind of cafe style. You go up buffet style t type thing. Um, so, and yeah, I think you know, it, it wasn't anything extravagant, but it, it, it you know, did what it did, and, um, and definitely was very cheap on our end. And we ended up just paying for everyone's stuff for the two days, because otherwise splitting it up would be kind of a hassle. Um, and then keep speeches short because people don't like listening to really, really long speeches, um, especially in like Catholic weddings that go on for two hours. Yes. Uh, and then our main thing was to make everything different, um, to, hence memorable, uh, making, causing confusion for, for the people because you know, yeah, everyone has an expectation of what weddings should be. And so they want you to go along that lines of what they expect, but if you, break all of that, they get really, really confused, and it's fun. <laughs> it's fun for us, at least. Um, they're kind of like really confused, but then eventually they'll find it fun, um, at least looking back at it. And then, um, as I said before, this is very anti-traditional, um, not just non-traditional, and so all of this is very, very fun. So prime example of that, when I first told my parents, they were like, what's steampunk, <laughs> obviously. And I was like, oh, here's some pictures and everything. My mom ended up like for a whole month would go out, buy something, dress up, take a, snap me a picture on her iPhone. And I'm like, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Return that. <laughs> so eventually she got it. And um, I was very impressed that my Asian family like really pulled through. Um, you see like my uncle here with like an aviator hat. My two cousins even matching with little gears. There's my mom, my grandma, who were actually really decked out. Um, you know, the top hats and everything. Um, it was very surprising. Um, a few of these, I kind of like helped them to pick out their outfits, but many of these, they just showed up and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, just poking at them a little bit and they, they eventually really liked it and you know. Exactly. <laughs> um, another case in point, this is Jeff's dad. Uh, he used to be, um, he, he loves sailing boats and everything. And initially, you know, given this task of theme punk, he's like, yeah, this is kind of stupid, whatever. Started looking into it and looking at all the costumery. So he incorporated like a nautical outfit, nautical steampunk outfit. He even has like a, a sword somewhere um, on his belt. Um, he actually grew this beard for two months just for the wedding. Um, so he, he like really, really got into it, um, which was a lot of fun for everyone. <laughs> uh, this is one of our other friends who uh, went to uh, Home Depot and made this kind of bionic arm thing. Um, he actually is like a steampunk ninja. He has a, one ninja hat and he actually did bring two swords. Um, checked it in his luggage. <laughs> like a whole like um, Japanese katana and everything. Um, pretty serious. Did he use it to cut the cake? He did, he did not, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like talking about very creative. Um, so ceremony a little bit. So this is the guy who presided over our ceremony. He is an ordained minister, I guess, of the humanist sect, one of those online things. Um, he himself is also a part of the Church of Subgenius and uh, Discordians Discordianism, if you're familiar with those. Very culty. <laughs> um, so we, uh, and, and one of 
our other friends made this outfit for him, which was amazing. Um, and in the, the whole ceremony, we talked a lot about how this was um, like a secular wedding and um, you know, the, the premise that you know, this is not the end all, this is just like the beginning of a relationship or whatnot. And uh, we, we also tried to do some anti-traditional things where the w women actually walked in first and then the men walked in, well, danced in to a techno song. <laughs> um, various things like that. Uh, anything else with the ceremony? Yeah. I'm losing it, okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Okay. Yeah, um, but the actual thing that was said was oh. that um, he said, I hear about by the pirate Vesemi, by the flying spaghetti monster, I hear by Finesse, human and human. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, mustaches are always great for a wedding. <laughs> Mustaches on women are always great for a wedding. <laughs> so this is the flying spaghetti monster thing. This is kind of a random concoction that I thought of uh, and never really tested before the wedding because we ran out of time. Uh, but it's a maypole, I guess, event where um, so you know obviously everyone gets a strand and they just kind of walk around in like various you know looping in between each other. So we made we made this um, flying spaghetti monster uh, and. One of the well, surprising thing, I, since I didn't plan it really well, obviously this is a little more skinny than it should have. Uh, but the other thing that was kind of nicely symbolic is as you keep going, the strings get shorter, so it brings everyone together. Oh. It, it's kind of cute. <laughs> and then, of course, we bow to it and everything. Um, and then, as I, oh, this is a quick talk, um, on the icing on the cake is actually we didn't have cake. We had pies. We didn't really like cakes. And we had, I think, eight different kinds of pies, um, and they were just yeah, scattered. So everyone had, had to take like several different pieces and share and stuff like that. Um, that was fun. Uh, so basically the whole theme of this is break free from traditional memes. Um, so we're all so, um, you know, based on the tra traditions and everything, we're so ingrained into thinking a wedding should be a certain type. Um, and, and it's actually surprising that like even semi-religious people end up having a very religious wedding just because that's what everyone expects and that's what they expect as a wedding. Um, and I just, you know, it's, it's, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do anything. Like we didn't do ring exchanges. We didn't do bouquet tosses. Like all that stuff is kind of meaningless to us and hence it was, there was no point in having it. Um, so yeah, so the theme, break free from traditions and make your own traditions. That's about it. <laughs> Any questions? Can you run this around for people with questions? Oh. Do anyone have questions? No? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a question, I have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, just, uh, I actually did um, not like quite as um, anti-tradition. I didn't do uh, quite as uh, anti-tradition, but we had uh, kind of a semi or a theme wedding with, um, I mean, we did pretty typical ceremony, but it was, uh, uh, we did me medieval uh, theme, so oh, everybody nice. dressed up medieval, oh. and um, we actually planned it in Las Vegas just because there's stuff to do in Las Vegas, so mm -hmm. we figured the whole family could be around. Um, so we did it at the Excalibur, which is the uh, castle, <laughs> yeah. and we had like a big enough group of people that people were stop stopping us like, like while while we're trying to go to the chapel, you yeah. know, like because they thought we were part of like some like show or yeah. Thing. It was <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, actually, awesome. in terms of like parents, my mom uh, actually said it was like her favorite one out of uh, like I'm uh, like one of like five kids, and you know, we've had like kind of bigger weddings with like much bigger kind of groups. This was like smaller with just uh, like family and friends, mm -hmm. or closer friends. But um, and then so my best friend um, after that, um, he ended up sort of doing a theme wedding too. He actually did like um, underwater. Oh, um, wow. So um, basically, and that was that was kind of fun because I wasn't actually like certified or anything. So I had to like learn to dive because I was the best. Wait, man. so everyone dived? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Underwater? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my god, um, that's awesome. And um, so uh, you know, I, I had to get learn how to dive and stuff. And um, the, the you know it was kind of traditional in that it was the rings, but uh, for the vows, you know, that you can't really talk to your water, so they had like a, a grease board. Uh, where you basically do Bruce Penn and like mark off like yes or no. Um, and then afterwards we just kind of like, um, you know, swim around a little bit. And, you know, the first th the thing my friend does, you know, after just getting married is like there's some like some shark that like swims by. So he drags his wife after the <laughs> 
So uh, anyway, it's you know, they're, it's that's really cool. And, you know, I think. How do they do the kiss? Um, I think just knock take helmets. The mask, uh, not the mask off, but the uh, just take it out just long enough to you know you don't know, while you're kissing anyway. So well, unless it's a really really long kiss, I guess. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, did you have other locations uh, in mind other than uh, the, the state park? Uh, no, we kind of just thought about the state park and looked it up, and I was like, okay, this works. Very minimal effort, <laughs> like I said. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 we were attracted to the idea of just like gluing everyone together, and where you can't do anything. Whereas, you know, in Vegas, people could be off gambling and stuff <laughs> in between, but. Um, this way, they're kind of like stuck and forced together for a while. I'll, I'll just throw in, so I can be self-indulgent here. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, me. Um, I'll just throw in that, you know, I've been to a lot of weddings. This was really, for me, the most fun. And it's kind of funny. Somebody was saying yesterday here that his bride-to-be sent him a photo of a wedding ring um, that costs more than double what they spent on their whole wedding. and. Uh, you know, Friday night in Portland, Saturday, Sunday, Monday in, in this remote place. It was just really a great time. I mean, I knew almost none of the people there, but you just kind of hang out with these people. And it was, uh, you know, the typical wedding. You talk to the bride and groom for, what, three minutes? And you fly across the country. <laughs> talk to them for three Talk to them for three minutes. And you fly home. <laughs> and this was just a really wonderful event. So, I mean, it was just really, really well done, I thought. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Are you guys getting <laughs> married? Are you guys getting married? Yeah, are you guys getting married? <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> you know, six hours can change that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have this game watcher. Yeah, he can, he can preside. <laughs> <laughs> no one here is ordained. My sister's ordained. I did perform okay. a wedding once. You are? Yeah. Ordained oh, what? Five, He's a priest. Huh? Universal Church of Life. I mean, we've got internet, so anyone can be ordained in five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's all get ordained. Oh, wait, I forgot. You're sitting in California, all you need is 50 bucks, uh, and you'll be ordained for the weekend. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so Good to know. It was a 